In today's video, I'm sharing the top four tips I wish I knew when I started cycling to help you recover better and stay energized for your next ride. As a professional cycling coach with 12 years of experience and over 200 cyclist coach, I've also been a cyclist for over 30 years from competing in world championships to local club races. And these tips have helped me and everyone from world tour professionals to recreational riders recover faster and ride stronger on every ride. Before we get into the tips though, let's first identify the number one sign of poor recovery. Like I said, feeling tired is normal, but watch out for the lack of breakthrough workouts. A breakthrough workout is when you feel great and achieve impressive numbers. These indicate proper training balance. If all sessions feel the same, then you might be stuck in a very narrow range, limiting progress. To fix this, you'll want to focus on nailing the fundamental recovery methods I mention in these tips. I coach a guy who's in his 30s and he's taking his longest break from full-time work in probably 20 years. Surprisingly, he's riding better than ever because he's mastered these tips. Our performance discussions always circle back to one core issue, stress and recovery. And even though he is a master of recovery, he often hits a plateau due to high levels of stress from life, work and an average of 15 hours of weekly riding. He manages this with various recovery strategies. Here's a chart from a study on recovery strategies in endurance athletes. It highlights various effective methods used by successful athletes. So if we check out this chart here, now I've got these things down here, hidden, and we'll get to the why in just a moment. But first, let's go through all the different things that this guy is doing. He has a sauna, he has a massage gun, massage weekly, probably compression foam rolling, definitely active recovery and some stretching, and also some cold water immersion. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight forms of recovery, and there's even more, but on his holiday, he couldn't bring his recovery toys or his sauna, so he's just sticking to the tips that we'll cover. And despite increasing his overall training volume, he hit a lifetime best 20 minute power number, reaching five watts per kilogram in his late 30s. And boom goes the dynamite. So what's the secret? Well, he sent me these messages. I definitely feel like it's the volume, but then also the ability to recover. Not being stressed allows me to focus on both. Also interesting because I haven't had as much massage or external recovery but haven't needed it. Mastering the fundamentals is key. This reinforces the message that recovery is simple but not easy. So focus on the following tips and manage stress to achieve your best performances. Tip number one, sounds simple, but if you take it for granted, you might not be doing as well as you could. And that is keeping up your hydration because even small reductions in hydration can negatively impact your recovery process. Our body is made up of about 60 to 70% water and it's essential for transporting oxygen and nutrients, regulating temperature and aiding recovery. Measured by clear or straw colored urine, you're likely able to tolerate fluid losses of 2 to 4% of body weight before your performance suffers. So after riding, rehydrate within the first 30 minutes to replace fluids lost through sweat. It helps if you weigh yourself before and after exercise to gauge fluid loss for every kilogram lost, drink 1.5 liters of fluid over the next few hours. High sodium drinks and salty foods can aid in retaining the fluids you consume, speeding up the rehydration process. But sports drinks can also help replenish electrolytes lost during intense exercise. Drinking small amounts of fluid regularly throughout the day supports ongoing recovery. Without nailing the second tip, you can forget about optimizing your recovery. This tip is focused on nutrition in daily recovery. And many people focus on nutrition around big events, but they overlook the importance in daily recovery. And recovering well from each training session leads to long-term adaptations, making you a better rider over time. And every time you make daily food and fluid choices, you have the chance to significantly impact your recovery and overall performance. So if we flick over here, you can see that if you're starting your ride and you're fueling and training, once you finish, the damage is being done. Now you get a chance here to make a choice what you're going to do. So if you're under fueling, you'll be hitting the next session here under fueled. If on the other hand, you feel correctly, you'll be hitting the session here, fueled and ready to go. 
The good news is that the nutrition strategies used for training recovery are the same for competition or big rides, so you can use training as a practice run for any serious rides as well. And like hydration, the sooner you focus on recovery after your ride, the better your adaptations will be. So key points here are immediately post-exercise nutrition is consume a mix of protein and carbohydrates within 30 minutes after exercise to kickstart muscle repair and replenish glycogen stores. Ongoing recovery, continue to eat balanced meals with a mix of protein, carbohydrates and fats to support sustained recovery. The third tip is exceptionally simple, but often difficult in our distraction-filled world. Not doing it will impair your recovery and reduce your ability to absorb bike-related stress. It also impacts pretty much everything and is a risk factor for coronary heart disease, high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes. It also impairs your cognitive function, how well you think and concentration and your endurance performance. And this tip is making sure you get enough sleep. The most common advice is that we need about eight hours of sleep each night and the exact amount of sleep a person needs, especially an active person, can vary. Because of the stress from riding, it seems likely if you're riding a lot, you might need more sleep. But Research hasn't fully answered this. What we do know is that athletes often don't get even the recommended amount of sleep. So simple but reliable signs that you need more sleep are if you're feeling sleepy and fatigued during the day, if you're feeling the need for a nap, and or relying on increasing amounts of caffeine to get through your day. It just basically sounds like everybody. But if that sounds like you, you probably need to get more sleep. And I can almost guarantee that better sleep will help your recovery and give you better cycling performance. So here are three tips on how to get more and or better sleep from a useful recent review article. Number one, minimize your time that you spend on the phone before bed. Using devices after lights out has a negative relationship with sleep. Number two, get into a routine and avoid weekend jet lag or big differences in sleep and wake times from day to day. Consistent sleeping patterns with non-stimulating pre-bed routines improve sleep. Number three, take a nap if you need it. If you do struggle to get enough sleep overnight, a short daytime nap can be helpful and there is some evidence that napping improves exercise performance. The fourth and final tip for better recovery is actually easy if you hire a coach, but it takes a bit more trial and error if you don't. But remember the cyclist I mentioned earlier, it took a long holiday for him to get proper rest and perform better. So simple, but not always easy. The tip is to make sure you rest. Now, rest can mean a few different things. In the most straightforward form, it means doing nothing. Following the well-known saying that every cyclist should remind themselves from time to time, never stand when you can sit, never sit when you can lie down, and never stay awake when you can sleep. Take every opportunity to stay off your feet. But the most common question I get about rest is, how often should I incorporate rest days into my riding schedule? Well, I can't provide a one-size-fits-all answer. There's a million ways to solve this problem, including hiring a coach to individualize rest. If that's not possible, you'll need some guidelines on how to start thinking about the time you need to absorb different types of training. Heart rate variability is a useful tool for this. I've used it on all levels of cyclists, from grand tours to coming back from illness, and it helps to get insights into the level of stress you're under. There's a bunch of research done on HRV, and HRV refers to the variability in beat-to-beat -beat intervals between heartbeats. And by measuring HRV each morning upon waking, you can get insight into how effectively you're absorbing your riding stress and non-riding stress. Daily measurements can therefore be used to make day-to-day -day stress management decisions and adjust daily training load based on the balance between stress and recovery. And while I'm not exclusively at this stage using HIV only to make training decisions for the athletes I coach, there are now several studies showing that adjusting pre-planned training programs day-to-day -day based on morning HRV improves performance outcomes. A step-by-step -step guide on how to integrate daily HRV measures into your writing is beyond the scope of this video, but the key point really here that I'm trying to make is that HRV is a useful means of assessing and managing stress and recovery. And there are a number of good smartphone apps that can be used to do this. 
my recommendation is HRV for training as HRV can be measured accurately using the camera on your smartphone. If you don't get into HRV, the evidence for other methods is a little light. So here's one way to adjust your writing that's from my experience. So let's have a look here. If you're doing exercise in this area, then you're fine. This is light endurance stuff and you should be recovered by the next day. The second one here, the heavy exercise intensity domain. This is 24 hours. You'll probably need 24 hours to recover from this tempo or sweet spot work. Then we step up to the severe exercise domain. Now this domain it chews through glucose. It is pretty tough work. So you're going to need at least 48 hours if you're doing a lot of work in a session before you would want to actually do anything similar or any type of hard work after that. So leave this time between rides and see how you feel on your next ride. If it feels good, then repeat as needed. If it doesn't, maybe something needs to change. Now recovery is only one part of the equation. If you want to ride faster, then having a structured approach to tailor your high intensity interval training sessions intelligently is the obvious next step, as is knowing how to set up your training for maximum effect down to the intensity, sets, reps, and details on how to conduct the sessions. Check out this video to really understand how to get the best out of the science and yourself.